Menu design impacts every aspect of a school nutrition operation, especially the financial success or failure. Menu design decisions are high impact, and the right decisions repeated equal success, while the wrong decisions repeated over and over may equal failure. Stop guessing and start knowing. MenuLogic K-12 takes the guesswork out of designing menus that are popular, profitable, and efficient. to First Taste TV. And today, we're checking out MenuLogic K-12. Is that a point of sale system? No, it's a menu intelligence software. Sorry. But first, let's check out the ICN resource of the day. In the Mix Up podcast series, Chef Patrick Garmon, the Associate Director of Culinary Education and Training at ICN, interviews child nutrition chefs from around the country to take you inside their kitchens and see how they are inspiring child nutrition. Brought to you by the Institute of Child Nutrition. We are sitting down with the creator and founder of Menu Logic, Lindsay. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Tell us about your guest here. Who is your guest? I have Betsy Willard. She is a school nutrition director with Franklin Township Schools in Indianapolis. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I'm assuming you're a Menu Logic customer. I am. I was a beta user even. Whoa. So I started yeah. with Whoa. Lindsay. I'm kind of at the ground Got up. A little something there. Like, oh, well, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> so. So how's it been going? It's great. It's yeah. a wonderful product. So we've been using it uh, two years. Are we yeah, at the two, two year years. mark? Wow. Um, and it's tremendously helped our program. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. So Lindsay, tell us about MiniLogic. Yeah. What's okay, it all so, about? Well, let me tell you about myself first okay. and how this all started. So um, I'm a school nutrition director as well. Mm -hmm. I've been doing this for 14 years. And since the beginning, I've pretty I've been the kind of person that I like using technology to make mm -hmm. my job better and to make my our work product better for kids basically so i've used probably three different pos applications over the course of <laughs> everybody laughs at me because i'm always like seeking that perfect so solution you sound kind of needy yeah yeah kind yeah. of kind of marlon i have i have high standards marlon uh, that's there. good oh, that is good yes. that is good all right fair enough so i've always been the kind of person that i want to use objective information mm -hmm. to yeah. make better decisions for my program mm, which it's ultimately all about the data it yeah. is it's all about yeah. Yeah. base no data over the course of time, I thought, well, I can, can I get the information that I want to build better menus from POS? You can get some of it, but not enough. Then I, I've tried three different menu planning applications over the mm -hmm. course of time. Mm -hmm. um, and what I got to the point where I need more information to make better menus for our students. Like, mm. like what type of information? What so, were you missing? For example, okay, so say I was building the menus and I'm thinking, I really want to put a higher cost menu item on the menu mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. I think it's a higher quality item but I'm scared of the financial repercussions yeah. of doing that. But then I think, okay, but if I sell more of it and it's at a different margin, maybe that's actually a better decision. But I have no way to figure that out. Mm -hmm. So you couldn't find this, so you decided no. just to create it. Well, I tried to create it in spreadsheets for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, which actually- Lots of tabs on yes. the bottom. Yes. <laughs> An excessive yes. amount, I'm sure. So I tried doing it over the course of time in spreadsheets and it's like, it's too much data. And it's too much mm -hmm. data working all together at the same time mm -hmm. that to be able to give you information back that you can actually use and actually have time to use because Ugh. who has time to yeah, enter into spreadsheets yeah. and then actually analyze it and put it to use? Like it needs to be quick if you're gonna mm -hmm. actually put mm -hmm. it to use, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So Mini Logic was born then. It wasn't created to be a POS software. It wasn't created to be a menu planning software. It was created based on here are 25 things that I wanna know as a food service director, like average revenue per student per day, profitability of items, profitability of menu cycle days, mm -hmm. all of these things that are menu decisions that I wanna know, how can I create an application and build it backwards to give us those answers? The backwards design model makes complete sense. Yeah. And having that data allows food service directors to make better logical menus mm -hmm. yes. that are financially based, but also take into account student acceptability. Mm -hmm. This sounds like a great additional software to have. I mean, how much 
time is it going to take me, though, Lindsay? How much time are you asking <laughs> from these directors or our teams to make this work? Sure. We want to get people up and running as quickly as possible because the sooner that you can start collecting that data, mm -hmm. the sooner you start to see results that you can immediately apply back to your menus. And I look at it as every production record, every menu cycle day is an opportunity. When we serve out that lunch on Tuesday the 4th, did we make money or did we lose money I have on no that? idea what I do any day, every day. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. we I might said know. children and that's like <laughs> gold. Yes, <laughs> exactly. I mean, correct. So, but it's really yeah. important to know how you did that day because you want to be able to serve the food that kids want to eat, increase profitability, mm -hmm. that way you can reinvest it back into your program, right? Well, and I think the bigger piece is, is if you're losing, you don't know you're losing on that day. So then yeah. you're extrapolating yeah. that times your 180 days of school. Mm -hmm. So you're yeah. lost a hundred and some dollars, two hundred some dollars. By the end of the school year, you've lost thousands of dollars. Yeah. Well, when you put and it that way. When you put it into menu logic, you see that same day. At the end of your day and all of that data is put in, mm -hmm. you then see, oh dear, I lost money. We need to pivot out of this menu cycle, this menu yeah. day, mm -hmm. immediately so it doesn't end up with thousands of dollars yeah. worth of loss. Well, that makes complete and total sense. So how would you define menu logic? Like, what is it? It's not menu planning, right? No, it's absolutely not menu planning. So okay. it's menu intelligence software. It's a type of business intelligence software. It doesn't do you any good to have data, right? If mm -hmm. it's not turned into information that you can actually use. Mm -hmm. So it's giving you information in a format that you can immediately use it and make better decisions. So it's supporting better decision making, mm -hmm. not only for directors, but also for manager level users mm -hmm. too, because yeah. it gives them mm -hmm. um, that data back about you know, preparation decisions and that too. But do directors have to install anything on their computers? Do managers install anything on nope. their computers? So it's all cloud-based. Okay. Um, so nothing to install locally, nothing to upgrade annually. You know, I've yeah. lived through that. Yeah. Lived through that. <laughs> yeah. But we're constantly, you know, making improvements and we're very user focused. And I don't want to put that in the way of anybody else's ability to serve kids better. Gotcha. So. Lindsay's company is incredibly agile. She okay. takes feedback from her customers immediately and then says, okay, I can do this to make that better for you. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, any other software company, it's, well, I'm going to put in an enhancement. Oh, and how I many years, how many years does it take <laughs> oh. for them to like hear enough people yeah. saying, please change this? Yeah. That's not how many logic works. She's very agile. She listens to her customers and says, okay, we can do that to make it better for you. Yeah. So. What's neat is that like she is the customer. So she knows exactly yes. what needs to be yes. made, how Beautiful. it should be done. Exactly. And, yeah. That's really cool. And I am, I'm still a school nutrition director mm -hmm. too. So yeah. like I I use it every day. Like mm -hmm. my staff uses it every day. So anything that they're, you know, we're like, oh, this is annoying. We can fix that. Mm -hmm. yeah. We have also um, listened to our customers and we're trying to make the onboarding process as streamlined and painless as possible. So what that means is you're giving us information and we're taking all that information and configuring everything for you. So the process starts with a discovery call where we go over what this process is going to look like. Then we go through a period of information gathering where you're uploading general documents that we request, things like meal prices, um, a la carte prices, production records, things that you already have. Um, and then we go through a series of um, settings, items, and menu configurations. So we're taking all of that information, we're reviewing it. Everyone on my team works in school nutrition and we're going to make recommendations to you about the best way to set it up using the information that you've given us. So once you've approved what our recommendations are, we figure out what that needs to be, then we execute. So we set up all your items, we set up your menus, and you're ready to go. You're ready for startup. So when we get to the startup phase, um, we give a customized training. Like we've seen all of your information at this point. So we can say, here's the exact points that you that we need to train your staff on to be ready to be up and running. And then most importantly, at we don't leave you after that. We're still with you. We come back and show you, um, here's how to find the information that you're trying to find and be able to wrap up and get any questions answered as well. One thing that's great about ManyLogic in terms of starting the process is that it's not that big of a change for your manager level users. Like it doesn't impact that many okay. people on your team. You no. know how resistant to change I you're- I was just gonna oh, say yeah. that. Mm -hmm. kind of, you know, change is difficult. Very difficult. Well, change is difficult for everyone, but I, you know, yeah. I think but if I see the value in it and it's going to make and me better. That's how we, that's how I sold it to my managers in my district was this is going to help us service our students better. Right. And in the end, that is going to make us more profitable and that's going to make, you know, us just better at mm -hmm. what we do. This is incredibly user friendly. Excellent. And so after you got through the initial hurdle of them getting used to the software, there's been no issues. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. And all Fantastic. they're doing is logging in and doing their production mm -hmm. records in it basically. Show us more. Okay, we are super excited to announce our new customer support portal because we are all about supporting 
our customers and helping them be successful. So check it out. Basically, we have you know the normal support tickets, all of that. Here's where we keep all of our product updates, all of our release notes. Um, if you want any hints here, requests and links to our blog posts. And then this is our most probably most impactful part our solution center. So we are very highly focused on providing um, customer support solutions that are super, or that are useful. So we have what we call our reporting roadmap, mm -hmm. um, which is, just, it's basically, if you think of, we're up to 45 things a food service director would want to know. So like non-program foods revenue expenses, average revenue per student per day, um, menu cycle day profitability, all of those things that you want to know. Well, we turn it backwards and we say, you want to know this? here's why you want to know it, and here's exactly where to find it, mm. which report, where on the dashboard, so that you can really engage anybody on your team. So like we're really excited. Um, we also have a series of training videos um, that give our users not the standard, here's where you click to do this. It's more, you want to know about menu cycle day profitability. Here's why you want to know, and here's how you can apply it. Mm -hmm. So um, they're really useful to use with their staff and quick and easy to learn from. That's and as awesome. you ladies know, our business sometimes changes. Yeah. And the mm -hmm. things that we didn't need before and perhaps weren't paying as close attention to on that call, yes. perhaps those things are going to be very important to us in that, that changing landscape or wherever the industry yes. takes us to the next point. So I love having that capability. Really fantastic. Mm -hmm. Betsy, what would you say would be you know your call to action? Why should directors really take a look at adding something to their already existing software portfolio. In the end, the de decision was easy for me. I had the same thought processes that Lindsay had. I want to add these higher quality products to better serve my students, but they cost more. Mm. And I was scared of what the financial impact was. And so being able to utilize this software has just helped my program serve my students better, serve my students better foods, higher quality foods, and know that real-time data right away. This software helps us drive every single menu decision. Wow. That's awesome. Every single menu decision in my corporation. I have 10,000 students, and um, I mean, we use it daily. My assistant director kind of, you know, manages it from the menu standpoint. Yep. You know, we get real-time, you know, costs. We start using it with our managers. We start running reports. We see what's, what's losing money, what's making money, and we're able to pivot immediately instead of getting through a semester or an entire school year. You know what I'm hearing from her? What's that? My favorite, my favorite three letters. What's that? ROI. ROI. Yes. Yep. What is it, it is an investment. Return yes. on investment. The return yes. on the investment. Yes. That's what I'm hearing from mm -hmm. you. So we're not only investing time, but we're also investing money into the software. Mm -hmm. yep. But what was so powerful that you said was at the end of the year, if I'm losing hundred dollars a day, what does that equate to mm -hmm. at the end? Mm -hmm. yeah. This is truly a revolutionary project and something that doesn't exist on the market yeah, today. Correct. Find, right? And I believe you have some examples to show us. We have some sort of game coming up that yes. we're going to play. Yes. Does we're going to show food? we're going to visually <laughs> show you how difficult it is to understand true menu item profitability. Okay. Um without menu logic. I'm going to smoke right. you. I'm just going to say wait, it. without wait, menu wait, logic. Each other or wait, wait, I think I'm playing too. It's all three of you against each other. Okay. We're going to see. Yeah. Cool. Let's do it. Okay. So Lindsay, what is going on here? Okay, we're gonna play a game. Okay. All right, so understanding your operations profitability mm -hmm. means understanding your menu's profitability, mm -hmm. right? Okay. Mm -hmm. And your menu is made up of items, so you have to understand item profitability. Okay. But when you talk about profitability, I think a lot of times we focus on revenue or costs, but profitability, you have to consider both. It's the relationship between the two. Yeah. Okay. So we're gonna look at some real life K-12 foods, and we're gonna figure out if we can figure out what this Profitability is. Okay. All right. Okay. Ready? Let's do it. All right. All right. Let's do it. All right. How do I win? All right. Well, let's start with <laughs> round one. We're going to start with these plain, you know, regular soft tacos, probably okay. on the menu. I have okay. the recipe up here for you. I even gave you some information to help you. Okay. okay. So, what is the cost per serving of soft tacos that you put on your menu? No cheating, Marlon. What is the cost per serving? What is the cost per serving of these soft tacos? Given the ingredients that we've given you on the slide. So you decided, I'm putting soft tacos on the menu. That was your decision, right? And you added up the cost of the recipe, the ingredient <laughs> cost of the recipe. Uh -huh. And that is how much your soft tacos cost, right? OK, got it. Okay. I'm winning. Go. All right. All right. Let's All see right. what we got. 34. No. <laughs> <laughs> Amanda, Betsy, get a point. Marlon. What? No. Marlon. 
Yeah. 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 Y
Okay, the correct answer is actually the spaghetti. Because if you know, it, the spaghetti actually, was on spaghetti. the menu. <laughs> the chicken sandwich on the menu almost twice as many times. So if you look at the, the how popular it was per day it was sold, it's actually more popular. Oh, that makes so much sense. Okay. Duh. Two more rounds, guys. We're getting there. All right. So now we've agreed popularity is important to the overall profit. And now we know how popular the item actually is. So which of those two items contributes more overall profit? Which? We're telling you how many you sold per day. This is why I have menu logic. I'm not good at this game. I'm not sure what's happening. <laughs> She's writing a book. OK, the answer is the chicken sandwich. OK, so even though the spaghetti is more popular, the chicken sandwich has a better individual profit margin because of the lower cost, the results, and a higher overall profit for the chicken sandwich. So what you're really saying is we all need menu logic. Basically, yes. It's impossible to do it without it. <laughs> I have found that, obviously, at how bad I am at this game. Oh my gosh. OK. What a great, wait, all are right. we not done? There's one more. Oh my gosh. One more. One more. OK. OK. All right. My math brain hurts. Which of those menu items has the highest profitability? Now we're looking at how many we sold per day and how we sold it. It's a guess. Just guess. OK. <laughs> oh boy. I quit. <laughs> okay, it's I'm the chicken taco. Yeah, All right, so this is the most complicated <laughs> in that you have to understand how the item was sold. So, was it sold in meals or was it sold all of a cart? Mm -hmm. Revenue is variable, cost is variable, it's all variable. Okay, to summarize the purpose of all of this, so what Menu Logic does in Menu Intelligence is we do all of this work for you. And we provide it to you in a really easy to use format. One of our best menu intelligence tools is what we call item performance. So what item performance is, is we classify your entrees for you. So we've done all this work. We've collected all this data for you um, that you're already collecting, by the way. You're already collecting it in production right. records and POS. Mm -hmm. So you're not doing any extra work collecting data. You're just giving it to us in a way we can use it and give it back to you. So you've got your stars. They're highly profitable. They're highly popular. Challenges, they're profitable, but they're not popular. Worker bees aren't profitable, but they're popular. And your problems, they're not popular, not, then they're not profitable. What if I told you that the spaghetti was your worker bee? All right. The chicken is your star. Chicken sandwich? Yep. The, the salad is your problem. And the taco is your challenge. OK. So now that you know. You're given that information. What kind of decisions could you make on your menu about Ooh. those items? Now, given to you in that format. I know we need to put some time into our taco challenge because I love tacos, and I'm not willing to take that off the menu. Also, it's using my commodity beef, so I want to make sure. I want to turn that into a star, mm -hmm. for sure. Yes. Menu your chicken more, you, it's a star. So it's popular, and it's profitable. So if you can make that maybe a daily part of your menu at your most popular buildings, you'll make more money. Don't put all your stars on the same day. Yes. Ooh, That's another one. Good one. What about your worker bees, Marlon? The worker bees. What do you bees. think you do the worker bee? Uh, That's like one of your biggest opportunity items. Yes. It is. It definitely is. So with the worker bees, you definitely want to find ways to reduce the cost of it. I mean, maybe you could do things like change the packaging yeah. that, that you're serving it in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Maybe pre-cup the guacamole or the whatever side goes with goes with the dish on something like that. I'm hey, not that food, was actually so really know. good. Look at you. That's a really yeah. good guess, you. right? Yeah. I'm learning. Nice. <laughs> yeah, so basically that's just a visual example of there's so many variables to all of this, and we help you figure it out and give it away that you can use it free program. So right. amazing. Good job, guys. Thanks, Thanks. So, so, so here's the big question. <laughs> Betsy. Yes. Does it work? It absolutely works. This is probably my favorite report that we use because it's a very easy, quick visual mm -hmm. that tells you what's working, what's not working, and then you know to hone in on those items and how mm -hmm. how to hone in on those items, yeah. exactly. why they're not working. All right, cool. Amazing, folks. Well, thank you so much, Lindsay yeah. and Betsy, thank for you. this amazing game. Um, who's the winner? Who's the winner? Hey, our winner is Amanda. Yay! And she gets this wonderful trophy. <gasps> Lindsay, very this fitting. couldn't be more appropriate. <laughs> I would like to thank all of the people that have contributed to my win. Well, I'll just thank Lindsay and Betsy for demoing this incredible new technology. Thank you so much for showing us some incredible things and for debuting uh, your new customer support exclusively on First Taste yeah, TV. I'm really excited about it. We hope that everyone has enjoyed watching today. To learn more about Menu Logic, go to www.firsttastetv.com. 
Click on the Menu Logic episode and see more from Lindsay about this amazing software. And catch us next time on First Days TV. <laughs> Take care, everyone. Bye. Menu design impacts every aspect of a school nutrition operation, especially the financial success or failure. Menu design decisions are high impact, and the right decisions repeated equal success, while the wrong decisions repeated over and over may equal failure. Stop guessing and start knowing. MenuLogic K-12 takes the guesswork out of designing menus that are popular, profitable, and efficient.